here we are heading out to Opleton this morning. Uh, we turned onto Opleton Road and we've now got 105 kilometres. Uh, and the sign says corrugations, bull dust, and ruts. trip out we're just sitting on that round that 60 70 kilometers an hour mark in no hurry um, and we don't want to come unstuck on a gravel road so we're just taking our time this morning it's quite interesting though everywhere you go you see where people just ease their rubbish out on the road when they're finished with it you know, it's really really disappointing that some people just don't care anyway We'll, um, we'll keep going and we'll see you when we get to Opleton. Well, we've just come into Opleton and it's got a big sign up Opleton designated fossicking land. Tony and I grabbed a permit the other day in town. So, obviously, this is the area around here where you can come and, um, and scrounge around. So we're only a couple of kilometres out now, we're going to pop in and have a look at the bush camp, get set up and then find out what it's all about. It's taken us a bit to get here, it's a pretty slow track on the dirt road, there's a lot of um, washouts and that. Uh, the road's not too bad, it's fairly corrugated and it's not, uh, it's not really bone charring. It's just flat, dusty and a lot of it. Anyway, we'll pop into um, Opleton and have a look. Here we go, officially um, welcome to Opleton, home of um, Boulder Opal, Boulder Opal in Queensland. Not much here yet, <laughs> but um, yeah, as I said before, it's supposed to be a really good bush camp, so we'll um, see what we can find. Well, here we are, we've uh, finally arrived at Opleton. It didn't take us long, um, uh, about an hour and a half. The roads are pretty good, but um, yeah, there's a lot of washouts and bits and pieces. But um, yep, we finally got here. So there we are. Welcome to the Opleton Bush Park. Now what I've found out is that this is Opleton. Tony and I thought that the bush park was next to the little township of Opleton. But in fact, this is the original location of the township of Opleton. So the only thing left now is the bush park. Um, as far as you can see, the, the country is flat. It's um, very rudimentary bush camping. You've got, um, um, we'll show you when you get into the camp. You've got hot showers powered by a little donkey boiler and you've got flushing toilets. There is drinking water um, from rain, rainwater tanks but the um, hot showers actually come from the freshwater dam and pumped across to the buildings. There's only a couple of people that actually live on site here. Um, some here you know two or three months of the year, some have been here for 18 months. All the, the major mining activity is scattered throughout the, the area out here. Uh, there's plenty of places to fossick. We, um, we've been doing some fossicking um, yesterday and we're going to do some more today and we found some nice fairy opal that we'll um, take some photos of later on. There's a gentleman here called Greg um, that is actually polishing the fairy opal and he has a process of where he grinds it back and polishes it up and it looks really beautiful so we might be able to get some shots of that later on and he's going to have a look at some of the stuff we've got and show us how to um to grind it and polish it so looking forward to that there's a um, shot of the showers um little information center here Jeff, the local tourist guide, and he's a miner out here as well. He's got a couple of underground mines. 
uh, it usually comes around every afternoon about four o'clock and you sit down have a couple of beers and just share stories of the day and um and he's really good with past history of the place jeff's been out here for 30 odd years so it's um he's, he's full of knowledge and you have a great afternoon of just telling yarns and that that's where i was saying you out for the airstrip if you want to camp out of the road i don't know if you can see it over the back of the water towers so the dam water's pumped up to the tanks and then it supplies a bit of head pressure over here for um for you to use in the showers and that just a little bit of the brief history of Opalton um, and I'm just going to read this directly from the from the sign that's here. Opal was first discovered at Opalton in 1888 by George Craig, a stockman from Warrenville Station. The first mine was worked in 1894. The township began in 1985 with the Opal Rush. By the end of the century there was a township supporting around 600 people. Opal Opalton became known for the enormous volume of quality of opal it produced and was in fact the place where the largest piece of pipe opal ever recorded was found in 1899. The precious opal was over 10 feet long and rumoured to be as thick as a man, man's leg. Now when, um, when Jeff takes you around and gives you a bit of a guided tour of the place he tells the um, the story of what actually happened to that bit of pipe opal and there's no fact around it it's just local local legend that because the drifts they were working were very small they couldn't get the whole piece out in in one piece it was just too big so they actually broke it in half and got it out or got the first section out a um a, a buyer had shown up you'd heard about it so they got the first section out uh, that buyer bought it um, and as all opal back in those days, as it was, all opal went back to Europe to be cut and polished and turned into jewellery. So he boarded a ship bound for Europe and headed home. Um, what happened was, uh, with that first bit, as rumour has it, the ship got into a storm and went down with the buyer and the opal still on board. So the second half, the second half the um, the miner decided to give to the local policeman to lock up um, lock up overnight so he could then wait for another buyer to come or get it somewhere to sell it and as legend goes next morning when he woke up and went to retrieve it the opal and the policeman had already taken off with it no one knows what happened to the second piece uh, it just disappeared forever so there you go a little bit of local legend around what happened to the biggest piece of opal ever found at Opalton. Days, the flies get very friendly. Haven't found a lot of mosquitoes yet, but we certainly have got a lot of flies. And there's just another quick shot of the campground and um, the area you've got to camp in. There are some undercover areas, which are really good. People um, pull up, use those. A lot of people with tents and um, swags and that get under them. But it's, um, as I said, it's very rudimentary. But it is extremely quiet and you've you've um, got to witness the stars in the sky out here for night time when the skies are clear so it's just unbelievable they do have um they do have wi-fi for um phone calling and they do ask you for a small donation to go towards that to help maintain um, that system um, the fees out here are two dollars fifty a night per person um, as I said, you've got you've got um, hot showers, flushing toilets, plenty of firewood. You know, as as long as you've got plenty of food, because um, Witten's about 120 kilometres away. Um, you can stay out here for weeks. And we've been talking to some of the people that we've met out here, and and they come out here every year, chasing the the fairy opal, and then take it home and polish it themselves, and and. Um, and some of them sell it, some of them just love coming out and chasing it. Tony and I found some nice chunks and I said we'll hopefully get a few photos of that later on so we can show you what it looks like. We're going to take a little bit of a tour around and um, show you just a couple of the, the relics that are still out here. Well, we've just driven over to the 
um, what you'd call the Opleton Dam, I suppose. It's the Opleton um, Bush Camp water supply. Um, pretty simple. Just a man-made dam. Windmill. Windmill pumps the water out of the dam into a couple of header tanks, which gives them the head pressure. For, I don't know if you can see it across there for the little campsite where we're camped. That is dam water. Um, that's what supplies the showers. Um, obviously you can't drink it, but it's, um, it, although it looks dirty here, when you're having a shower it looks quite clean. And as I said, we had a nice hot shower last night and it was fine. Uh, there are yabbies in here. And apparently one of the blokes that used to live here was renowned for putting um, little finglings of different types of fish in the dam. Um, I don't know if there's any fish still in here, but um, story goes, pretty good yabbies. So there you go. Oh, another bit of um, another little bit of interesting history, I suppose. When the council was pushing the dam in, a lot of people came out here and camped for days while they were pushing all the walls up for the dam, hoping they'd be able to spot some opal uh, in the overburden that came out. But um, apparently, not a speck was found in the entire wall. So there you go. Um, Opleton Dam or Opleton Water Supply. Uh, we just pulled up coming back from the dam and Tony's just picked out this sign. So there we go, this is the historic site of the police station that's left. Um, this one here is the historic site for the old blacksmith shop. There we go, we worked it out. Um, there's a lot of star pickets around with just these little tin signs on it. Here's the historic site for the um, store. Here we are at uh, site number four, the historical site for the stagecoach office. Ah, and here's the most important one. This is the historical site for the local hotel. We're just going to pop out, see if we can get a drink. Tony's just found the existing site, or the site for the existing water hole. And this is what they had for their water supply. Obviously they didn't have the big dam uh, that's been put in in recent years. This is all they had to sustain the population. So this is the site of the original water supply. As you can see, you can understand, it would have dried up pretty quick. And, their, um, and the quality was pretty darn ordinary. But, there you have it. Okay, this is where Tony and I have been coming to do what they call uh, noodling. Um, and you're just going through what's been dug out from the undergrounds and just sifting through it. And a lot of people come looking for what they call fairy opal. And fairy opal is little tiny sparkles of opal in between the layers of um, ironstone and sandstone. And then sometimes you get it right through the sandstone. And Tony's just found a piece. I'm just going to see if we can, if you can actually see the colours in it. You know, this is purples, there's reds. It's a bit hard to grab it. Yeah. With um, you don't want the shadow on it. So the sun hits it, you wet it down, and you'll see it in there. We're going to take it to, as I said, Greg this afternoon and he'll show us, show us how to grind them and polish them. Yeah, that's what we've been doing while we've been here. And it's a simple process. You walk around, you look for, um, look for the, the, the bands or the layers in the sandstone, not the pink rock. The pink rock uh, doesn't bear anything. And then there's a real, um, what do they call it, like a mudstone that doesn't bear any opal either.